Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Um, first of all, apologies for um, the lower production on this. I can't use my microphone at the moment because I'm using the input on my sound card for what I'm doing today to show you. And I also can't use a screen recorder because I don't have one for Windows just yet. I'm just, just using this in Windows for now because I just wanted to show you something, something I found to be quite interesting. Now, this is the output. Um, if I can show you by zooming in over here, I can move this across there. And as you can see, that's minus three dBFS, right? And the cursor's set at uh, three kilohertz. And look at the total harmonic distortion there, 0 0.0077. And with the noise, we can see that it's 0 0.0099. And that's using this quad 405. Um, now that's different results than what we got before. I'm using the same, just 32 volts in both sides, so 32, 0, 32, right? We're on an eight time load. And that's the results that we're getting. So, as you can see, there's the fundamental here. And I've shown you already, it's down at, it's at a minus 3 dPFS. And all the harmonics that come off that, it's fair enough, they're all going lower and lower. And at 3, uh, we've got um, 89.61 dB. So that shows it to be a lot better, especially when you consider the total harmonic distortion, 0 0.0077 or total harmonic distortion plus the noise, 0 0.0099. Now we can also look at the um, frequency response here. And then we put that to six, update that, there we go, right. Uh, now if we do this frequency response across there, we get to see that even though the graph's moved itself, we go up, bring that down. We get to see our frequency response. So I'm going to just stop that. And yeah, so here we are at 20 and at 30, it's sort of dropped down a bit. Um, now, this is something that, you know, I've, I've popped my head apart on this so many times now. I mean, we're minus 0 0.22 down here. Now I know that you may not be able to see this as well and I will get this set up properly. But I just wanted to show you this because it's quite intriguing as to although this looks pretty much the same as in the audio analyzer suite, this now has the ability to see in more depth than what I could before. And so ah you know it's um it's intriguing because I said before that I listened to the Quad 405 and it sounded quite nice and it does sound quite nice. It's better than some of the others, the MX-50 and stuff like that because on that I noticed in the middle, in those middle ranges, there was something missing. And you don't get that when it's quite, and this is using the TO3 package. Like this quad 405, so I'm not even using the newer version of the newer transistors, I'm using this older version, and these are the results back from it. And I'm quite uh, surprised, yeah, there's a little bit of uh, climb here, but nothing. If we look, that says uh, 0 0.04 dB against uh, the, the, free, uh, the, the signal going in, and this down here at 30 hertz is 0 0.2 so it's not even not, not even half a dB or anything like that. Um, and that could be why, like I said before, that there are quite a lot of people out there that build these up and they put them in cases and they enjoy listening to them. Now, some people say, well, you don't get those lower notes, but look. <laughs> all right, well, first of all, you've got to have a, you've got to have a source that's going to provide that to you. Right, so for me, just as my little 
knock around, see if I can find it. I've got like a little, little music player. And it has some pretty good specs on it. That's some pretty good specs. Mm, can't find it at the moment. It's probably in the bedroom because I've set a little system up in my bedroom. Um, and that will give me, you know, a good low noise and it'll give me a good sound, which will take me down to those frequencies. But not everybody is going to have that ability to start off with. All right. And then you've got to have an amplifier that's going to reproduce it as flat as possible to the same as what you've got. So let's say your source input was this and then the amplifier was this. Then you can hope then that your speakers could then represent this. Meaning that your speakers will only drop off, let's say this is... I know the little speakers I have up on the shelf here at the top at the moment, the little Q, uh, Q acoustics. At 70 hertz is where that's it. They they don't really have any more response any lower than that. So here at 70 hertz that would be. So those speakers there, anything after this, it could just drop off down here. And it's not going to really make any difference to what I get to listen to on those speakers. Because even if I could put it in, you know, completely flat and the amplifier reproduced completely flat. My speakers are dropping off at 70 hertz. So that's that. That's all she wrote. You're not gonna get any more. You don't matter how flat this goes all the way to zero. You're not gonna get any of these frequencies reproduced through your speakers because your speakers aren't capable of doing it. Um, the ones in my bedroom go to 45, 46 hertz, sorry, around about here. So we're good for this amplifier too, because anything after that, those speakers drop off. The speakers I have next to me here go to 35 hertz. So where are we here? We're 33, so 35 hertz. Uh, and we're good to there. Anything after that, we're dropping off. But I don't have speakers that reproduce anything lower than that. So this, it wouldn't affect me. You understand this, and so what I'm saying? And this little tiny rise at 20 kilohertz um, is not really, you know, 0.02, it's, it's saying down here. I'm just going to zoom into that for you so you can see where the cursor is. 0.02, that's at 18259 kilohertz. 0.02. So, hmm. All I can say to you is, look, as what I said before, is that when I first listened to this and paired it up and listened to it, I found nothing wrong with it. I thought it sounded fine. And I got a funny feeling um, that you would probably find the same thing. So I'm saying this now for this Quad 405. Uh, yeah, it does sound good. And I'm going to do them all. I'm going to redo them all, but I'm going to try and get a bit of a better setup. I'm sorry this is like this just for this minute in time. But I just wanted to get something out there because it's I've... I've tried so many things with this. First of all, it was a case of getting this thing calibrated and I went through a whole bunch of cables and I'm gonna do a video on that um, just to show you that the importance. And sometimes the, the well, what can the word be? I've got different types of cables. One's brand new that came with the sound card device that I'm using at the moment, which is the Creative uh, Sound Blaster AE9. So if you want to look that up, it's got some pretty good specs. And to be honest with you, see these, these old sort of cables I've got here? These are the best ones. This is the best cable I have. Because when I took um, readings for homage, and I also did the calibrations on this, I got the best results for the calibration and everything else with these older wires. Now... I'm going to have to do some more reading to figure out why that is, and I'm expecting there's going to be capacitance that comes into it and bits and pieces like this, but surprise, surprise, the brand new ones that came with the Creative Sound Blaster didn't do as well as what these old wires did. Some ones that look like pretty chunky, pretty wide chunky uh, cables, <laughs> they were absolutely terrible. And, uh, and the ones in between didn't do so well either. I was really surprised. Because I'm using here the best I can use at this minute in time until I find other cables um, that will give me, hopefully, 
a different result because it seems like different cables give you different results and these ones are giving the best result because they're working the best and that's why I'm using them on this setup like this. So anyway, that's uh, just food for thought. Um, I'm going to reiterate again that this is a pretty nice sounding amplifier and if you were going to go and buy it to set it up for yourself, it's pretty simple to set up. It's, uh, as you can see from the frequency response, it doesn't do bad at all, not bad at all. And um, like I've explained, you know, from here, for my speakers, myself personally, uh, on this line, 70 hertz is where mine drop off. Well, this exceeds uh, the abilities of my speakers. And it also exceeds the abilities of my uh, 35 uh, hertz, which is the big floor standards, the monitor audio, uh, monitor 300s that I have in the lounge here, and uh, the ones that I have in the bedroom. 46 hertz this 45.41 uh, also exceeds those so this amplifier is great for all those speakers as long as what you can feed into it uh, can provide uh, just as well on the frequency response so anyway video is too long cheers for watching guys and i'm going to bring you a better production quality one on the next one bye for now